Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Frank Wallenwein, uh, Delta Bravo 1 Fox Whiskey. So he is in Germany, and his uh, mailing address has a d .de in it. Okay, so here we go. It says, hi Dave, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. I learned a lot from your videos. I have a question regarding marine antennas. <clears throat> marine antennas are not those associated with uh, people in combat boots. Marine antennas go on boats or ships. By the way, you might ask, why are marines called marines? Uh, it actually is the same origin of the word marine, uh, the ship. The Marines are troops, the Marines are part of the Navy, and the Marines are carried to where they will fight on ships, hence the name Marines. Okay. Hi Dave, thank you for your knowledge. Uh, let's see, I have a question regarding Marine antennas versus ham antennas. When I look at Marine SSB antennas, I find backstay antenna, length should be chosen so it is not resonant on any used band. Basically, it's just one wire of a certain length, let's say 23 feet or longer, or a whip antenna. These are usually 23 feet or 27 uh, foot poles. They seem not to care too much about resonance for a given band. The antennas are matched by the tuner for all bands from 2 to 30 megahertz, which works perfectly well. On the other hand, we have ham antennas where all kinds of techniques are used to make them resonant for different bands. Can you explain the difference? Would it be just as good to use wire of a given length and tune it with a good tuner? In other words, an ICOM AT4141. Uh, yes, actually. Or why is it that ham antennas are usually resonant antennas for the band used and marine antennas appear not to care about reson resonance? ICOM even warns not to use multiples of a half wavelength. Okay, so we can draw a ship or boat. This would be a boat, sailboat. Okay, it's got a sail on it. It's held in place by various ropes and so on. And one of these connections here is called a backstay. And you put the wire on the backstay, and it's a vertical. This is a vertical antenna. The ground is attached to something on the boat. The boat serves as the counterpoise for the antenna. If you are in salt water and this connects with the salt water, oh, you're in like Flint because salt water is a fantastic reflector of RF waves and an excellent conductor of electricity. However, if you're in a freshwater boat, that's not true. So you'll be using something on the boat as the counterpoise for this vertical antenna. Now he is pointing out that the way that this works on the boat is that there is a non-resonant length here and there is a tuner here. Okay, now you can use this on ham radio just uh, fine. One of the reasons that they say do not use multiples of a half wavelength is because a vertical is a quarter wavelength okay and if you make this a half wavelength the tuner has a real hard time tuning it it can be done but you need the uh, if this is a half wavelength it becomes an end fed half wave and you need a ballon that will give you like a 49 to 1 ballon something like that most tuners don't cover that you have to actually put the ballon in there so if it's not that, the tuner, uh, both uh, ICOM and Yesu sell these tuners, and they are designed to feed a non-resonant uh, uh, antenna. Now, here's the thing. The antenna, in order to radiate radio waves, needs to be resonant because you get this resonance factor in the Q for how much bandwidth it has, etc., etc., etc. Okay, 
So that's what the tuner does. What the radio sees is tuned. But what you look at, the piece of wire, isn't because it isn't all of the antenna system. The tuner is very much part of it. Now these tuners that they make go right at the base of the antenna. And they've got motors and stuff in there that switch in and out or turn uh, ro uh, uh, inductive rotators inside there to get different inductances and so on. Okay, and they're not cheap. They're not cheap. So you ask the question, why is it that ham antennas are usually resonant antennas for the band used? They're very simple. It's cheaper that way. A lot cheaper. Because uh, you can get the whole band uh, reasonably resonant on like a 40 meter dipole or 20 meter dipole or something like that. You get the whole band so your pan adapter can see the whole thing. A situation like this is pretty high Q. If you change your frequency very much, this thing's going to retune. It's usually automatic. Okay, but you're not going to see the whole band for your pan adapter because the antenna has got such narrow Q. When every high Q, whenever you have to add loading, which usually means inductance, add inductance to load the antenna, you are making it a high Q antenna and the bandwidth of that antenna is low, but it will work perfectly well as well as a quarter wave vertical, really. And uh, that's why they have these. They can tune them on any frequency that they want. Can you use a system like this for ham? Absolutely. If you look like, for example, I'm going to pull down the paperwork for the um, ICOM 7300, and I'm going to go to the... Um, manual and look at some accessories. Hey, this right here is what we're looking at in the ICOM case. It's an AH4 tuner and what you've got is an HF band long wire antenna or to an optional AH2B. The AH4 is an automatic tuner and note that this is placed right at the antenna. There is a control cable that plugs into the back of the radio, and that control cable isn't terribly long. So this would be, it's a, let's see, seven meter cable. Um, you can do this very easily on a marine vessel. You have this, it's grounded to your structure, um, and the control table goes out, and this connects right at the antenna. Okay, right at the antenna, and this will automatically tune for you. Okay, um, Yesu offers a similar unit for its Yesus, and that Tuner Connect tunes that particular one and provides the necessary power, control, so on and so forth to give you the automatic tuning. So, will a sailboat type system work for you? Absolutely, yes, it will. Can you use this in a situation where you cannot put anything up that can be seen from a ways, use some gray wire as long as you can make it um, and use this tuner to tune to the various bands that you want to use. If it has particular trouble with one of your bands, uh, shorten or lengthen the antenna uh, until it will work. Okay, so I think this gives you the answer to your question, uh, Frank, and uh, good luck with your hamming in Germany there for uh, Delta Bravo 1 Fox Whiskey. So there you have it. If you've come this far in watching this video, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. Subscribe is simple, you just click on it. And uh, you have a list of your subscribe channels over uh, if you go to directly to youtube.com. Um, and it also tells uh, YouTube that this is a channel worth watching. And also you can share this video with other people. And 
anyone is welcome to use the YouTube embed code to put this video on your club website or something like that, any of the videos, using the YouTube embed code, which means that when somebody watches it, it looks like it's on your website. But in actuality, you're watching it on YouTube and I get credit for the views and, and so on like that. So until we next meet, 73.